Hello everybody and welcome back to That's Football. This is your latest transfer news and we've got some big news for you this morning. Romelu Lukaku to Chelsea as Chelsea put in a second bid to bring him to, funnily enough, Chelsea. 100 million, now we think it's euros, 100 million euros plus uh, Alonso. Uh, Fernando Alonso, not Fernando Alonso, the left back who plays for, I don't know, what, what is his name at Chelsea? Is it Fernando Alonso? It's not Xavi. The left back who plays for Chelsea plus 80 million. I think it's 80 million euros. Uh, 100 million, 100 million uh, euros including Marcus Alonso. Bloody Fernando Alonso. He bloody, he's, driving, he's driving bloody cars. It'd be probably worth more than Marcus Alonso actually. Defensively very good, did very well against Lewis at the weekend. But yes... Now, it's funny because yesterday, busy day yesterday, but I was checking my Twitter last night and I'd been tagged in a few tweets from uh, United fans saying, ooh, Goldbridge lives up the arse of Chelsea's transfer policy, saying how they, they swoop in and get players like Kunde and he's still not signed. And I'm like, yeah, wait for it. I, mean, I, I love these sort of fans um, and United are starting to get more of them, the people who start celebrating races that, that, that are not finished yet. Um, Chelsea and Man City are not going to sit back on this transfer window and go... Well done, United, for Varane and Sancho. I mean, they probably will eclipse it. And then United will sit there at the end of the window and go, yeah, we got Varane. Yeah, we got Sancho. But Chelsea bought three good players and so did Man City. So the race is still there to be run. And, and look, Chelsea are not going to sit there and go, oh, Haaland don't want to sell, um, Dortmund don't want to sell Haaland. Haaland. Bayern don't want to sell Leverku, uh, Lewandowski. Ch uh, Inter don't want to sell Lukaku. Kane don't want to sell Spurs. They'll get one of them. They will. Because that's what they do. And all right, even if they don't get one of them, they'll go as hard as the need is needed. They won't do what United and other clubs will do and go, that's too hard and expensive. Let's buy no one. They will They will go for it. And to be honest with you, 100 million euro plus Alonso is probably, wow, well, 100 million euros is about, what, 80, 85 million I suppose Alonso is probably worth about 15. So they're offering about £100 million to Inter for Lukaku, including a player. I think if they offer £100 million, they will get him. I do. I think Inter will take it. But the most important thing here is um, Lukaku did go to Inter for around 75. So where's the improvement? You know, I think that Chelsea are going to have to offer £100 million to get Lukaku, which is going to be about €120 million. Euros. So they're going to have to increase the bid. But the fact that they are bidding shows that Chelsea aren't messing about. They desperately need a number nine. And we spoke about this at the start of the summer and we'll talk about Kane in a minute. But the reality is Chelsea know they need a Lukaku or a Kane or a Haaland. And the great thing about those three is they come to the Premier League and they tear it up. Kane already has, Lukaku has and Haaland is going to. So what, And also they, they're both going to do it probably for three, four years at least, all three of them. So that's what Chelsea are looking at. And I just don't think they're going to sit back and go... Ah, we won the Champions League. We got in the top four. Tuchel's doing a great job. Let's stick with Werner. They've got to buy a striker. Giroud is gone. They want Abraham to be gone. They've got to buy a striker. And the striker that Chelsea want is not going to be Callum Wilson or Danny Ings. It's going to be a Lukaku or a Haaland or a Kane or someone like that. Now, Kane's very difficult. We'll talk about it in a minute. Haaland's very difficult. Um... The reality is with Haaland, it's going, to, it's going to take silly money. The combined package for Haaland is going to touch 200 million quid. The combined package for Lukaku is going to be a lot less than that, although north of 100 million. But that's what it's going to take. Chelsea want that calibre of a striker. Let's see how they go and get that calibre of a striker because that's what they want. And it's all right saying, well, Chelsea sit back, but Chelsea aren't Manchester United or Arsenal or even Liverpool who are owned by people who go, that's too expensive. Let's get on with what we want because we're a business. Chelsea are not really a business. They're a football club owned by a billionaire who wants to win. And he wants to win today, not tomorrow. And he's proven that. Last summer, they spent a lot of money on Lampard. He was gone just after Christmas. They won't wait about. It will be too, Cal. What do you want? I want a top-class striker. Leave it with us. Oh, season starts in a couple of weeks. Don't worry about that. You've won the Champions League. We want to win the Premier League. Well, I need a striker. I've told you don't worry about it. We'll go and get you one. So I think it's going to be very interesting to see the development around Lukaku specifically for the moment. Now, some Chelsea fans feel that this Lukaku bid is there to derail Dortmund to make them open up the doors to Haaland because at the moment there's no bid gone in for Haaland. But maybe if you bid for Lukaku, it makes Dortmund think, ooh, we might want to sell a player now for £120 million that we're only going to get 75 for next summer. But look, 
I think, to be fair, <clears throat> obviously Haaland to Chelsea is a great signing, but Lukaku to Chelsea wouldn't be a bad signing either. He'd probably fit their system quite well. So let's wait and see. But one thing I would say with quite a big level of certainty is that by the time the season starts in a couple of weeks, I expect to see Chelsea starting the season with a world-class striker. And I think they need to do that because their start to the season has got a couple of potential games that they might struggle in. So they will bring a striker in. And at the moment, you know, go with what's hot. I think it'd probably be Lukaku. In relation to Harry Kane... Obviously didn't turn up for training yesterday. There was talk about COVID. There was talk about transfer requests. The bottom line with Harry Kane is that he's trying to force a move out of Spurs. The uncertainty about Harry Kane is we don't know where he wants to go because he basically put a transfer request in before the Euros when it broke on Sky that he wanted to leave. To do that, I've always said you've got to have a club to go to. You've got to know there's interest. And at the moment, we're presuming it's Manchester City, but we also know it's going to cost 120 to 150 million quid. Now, City are trying to get Grealish done, and Grealish to City is, is City's priority. I think that will happen, and that will happen for around 100 million quid. So if City buy Grealish for 100 million pounds, and then they buy Kane for over 100 million pounds, they've just spent over 200 million pounds on two players, which destroys the fabric of football in this country, because where and how do you do that? And you're already, chat, you know, when has anybody done that? Not only have they just won the league, they've just gone and spent over £200 million on two players. So huge statements here. And this is why Chelsea themselves need to react. People are saying, oh, Chelsea won't spend £100 million on Lukaku. They won't spend £150 million on Haaland. They sort of have to because they're the only club that actually wants to do that sort of thing, that isn't a business, that wants to win. And if Man City as champions are buying Grealish and Kane for that sort of money, then Chelsea know they've got to respond. I think it's going to be very interesting with Harry Kane. He doesn't want to be at Spurs anymore. Um, he's going to have to turn up for training because it's beneficial for himself. He can't not train for three weeks um, to force a move and miss the start of the season. It's better for Kane to be playing football. And ultimately, I know he wants to go. And it's a difficult situation, but you're under contract, Harry. And Spurs fans don't deserve an end to your career like that. It becomes very toxic and it tarnishes your reputation at the club. People will understand, and I'm not a Spurs fan, but I presume Spurs fans will understand that Harry Kane wants to leave. But there's a, there's a way of doing it. And look at Rafael Varane with Real Madrid. I mean, he's, he's shaking hands with the players as he leaves, with the president as he leaves. There is a way of doing this whereby people won't be happy with you going, but show some class. Now, maybe he feels frustrated that he has to force a move. Maybe he'll turn up at training today. The reality is there's a way of doing it. And Harry Kane, to himself, owes it to himself to not tarnish his reputation at Spurs, which has been nothing short of legendary. Um, you can say you want to leave and still respect the club and respect the fans. And I think he needs to do that. But maybe he's feeling trapped because maybe Spurs are saying... You turn up, you play, we're not going to sell you. And Harry Kane is probably thinking, how do I force this to make it happen? And to force it, maybe he's got to drive the price down. And if he's got to drive the price down, then it's going to get very toxic because the way you drive the price down is you don't turn up for training. You make it a legal battle and that becomes very messy and will tarnish his, his reputation. So keep an eye on that. I presume Harry Kane will get back into training because he needs to be back training himself so he's fresh for the start of the season. Looks like Man City are the favourites to get him. United, no. Chelsea would love Harry Kane. I just don't know whether they, that could happen. But you don't know what's going on privately. You know, maybe Chelsea are saying, "Look, we'd love you at Spurs." Uh, sorry, we'd uh, we'd love you at Chelsea, but that's going to cause a lot of problems. If you want to cause those problems, then maybe stop going to training and and force a move, and we'll take you in. But you you know, Spurs fans are going to dislike you forever. But look, they did they did it with Sol Campbell when he went to Arsenal. I don't think that will happen. But I'm interested to know who the club is that's told Harry Kane they'll pay £150 million for him because somebody obviously did at the start of the summer. Because if you're Harry Kane and you want to leave, but nobody wants you, it's just one of them situations. I'm stuck. I'll have to be quiet. You don't say I want to leave when nobody wants you. So he's got to have, he's got to have been told who wants him. And, and I presume it's going to be Manchester City in that situation. So let's wait and see what happens. There was some talk this morning that Grealish is going to stay and sign a new contract at Villa. If he does that, respect but ultimately I don't I wouldn't do that I'm sure many of you wouldn't do that I mean I don't want him to go to Man City but 
He is a player that deserves to play in the Champions League. He is a player that I think is one of England's best talents at the moment. And while while he plays for Villa, he gets underappreciated. We saw it with Southgate in the Euros. He doesn't get to play in the Champions League. They're not going to break into the top four. So look, you can stay at Villa for the rest of your career, but you'll never play Champions League football. So I think, you know, many players have done this. They leave the club they love to go and, you know, win things. And maybe that's what Harry Kane's trying to do. You know, realistically, maybe, maybe that's what he is trying to do. I think Grealish will go to City, and I think it's the logical thing to do, even though I don't really want it to happen. Anyway, smash a like on the video. Make sure you subscribe, bottom right-hand corner. Things are starting to heat up. Lots of content for you to come on this channel, so make sure you subscribe. I've dropped the link in the video description for my Twitch FIFA career mode. We'll be live playing that this afternoon at around 3 o'clock. So make sure you click that link and follow me on Twitch. We'll be live around 3 o'clock. And obviously, if anything happens in the world of football, you'll get your updates on that's football. So make sure you subscribe. Bottom right-hand corner. Have a fantastic day.